Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 21st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Sunners Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I think it was just yesterday that I talked about some of the dangers of DLL side loading and security software being used against you. Renato wrote up a real great analysis of what he calls the Guildma information stealer, which is malware that he has observed in Brazil. One feature that sort of caught Renato's attention here and is certainly somewhat unique for malware is the use of Facebook and YouTube. We have seen malware use social media sites in order uh, to uh, basically serve as command control server, not so much really Facebook and YouTube. In this case, uh, these sites are used to refresh lists of command and control servers that are being employed by this malware. Renato has counted a total of 76 command control servers so far and essentially what happens here is that the malware is checking a certain number of Facebook and YouTube accounts and the attacker keeps updating these accounts and deposits a list, an encrypted list of command control servers that's then being read by the malware. Now, the malware as so often starts with a phishing email that tricks the user into downloading the actual malware, most of it initially in JavaScript. And then as a next stage, it uses DLL site loading. So what it does here is it launches a component of Internet Explorer, ext export.exe. So this is not malicious software at all, but when it starts up, it searches for a number of DLLs and the attacker is clever enough to leave their DLL inside the Win32 libraries directory. So that's where then the attacker's DLL is picked up by ext exported exe and executed. Another interesting procedure that's being used by this malware is process hollowing. I believe it's a little bit a newer technique really. And what it means is that the attacker will suspend, again, a non-malicious piece of software and swap its memory. And then essentially this process that is known to be non-malicious will now run the malicious code. In this particular case, the attacker picked a piece of software by Debold called Warshaw, and it's, according to Renato, often distributed as part of online banking software in Brazil. The ultimate goal of the software is then to steal usernames and passwords from browsers and email clients. So essentially just waits for the user to log in and then exfiltrates the credentials. Renato is providing the command control servers that he has spotted so far, as well as the URLs for the three YouTube channels and the two Facebook accounts that did participate in this attack. Now, uh, if you believe that, uh, well, this was focused on Purcell, well, you know what's going to happen next. Other attackers will copy these particular techniques and use it in their next version of their malware. Well, and yet again, we have some software components to worry about. In this case, it's a Ruby gem REST client that was compromised. The developer apparently reused passwords between different sites and the developer's password was leaked in some random breach and then used to modify the REST client Ruby gem. The changes were made between August 13th and 14th, a number of new versions of uh, this particular gem were released during this time and the backdoor code did essentially exfiltrate credentials. And as typical for these type of attacks, the real problem here is not whether or not you used the REST client gem, but uh, that you may have used other gems that included this REST client gem for you. Some notable affected gems are Bitcoin Vanity, Lidacoin, Dogecoin, also coming soon, and OmniAuth, Amazon, and a couple more. 
Then I have a quick correction to an attack that I covered yesterday, the knob attack, the Bluetooth attack. I stated that this vulnerability is really only exploitable during the initial pairing of two devices. Well, uh, that's not quite true. And thanks for Thomas to pointing this out to me via Slack. Uh, the vulnerability is exploitable even if you reconnect to a device that you paired with prior. So anytime you are reestablishing connection, this vulnerability could be exploited. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.